Join us once again with our testing rig, and we're going to be testing to see which one's better. The Arcadia 50 Watt Spotlight or the 50 Watt Arcadia Floodlight. Is there a difference? Are they just a marketing scam? We're going to do loads of tests and show you exactly what you're going to be getting with each one of these products. Quickly run through exactly what the plan is. We've got the Arcadia Spotlight 50 Watt over this side. We've got the Arcadia Floodlight 50 Watt over this side. We've got two different ceramic ball holders there connected by the exact same wire straight into the middle that's exactly the same length running down to an exactly the same wire that goes directly into a plug doing it this way we get the exact same wattage going up to exactly the two different bulbs at exactly the same time if we had it going into one and then over to the other there'll be a slight little variant and we want to eliminate all variables in this test we had a comment that said, are the spotlight and the floodlight exactly the same product? Is it just a marketing gimmick? Now I can tell you straightforward, there is a difference and we're gonna be showing you the difference here, but we're also gonna be testing loads of other parameters with each individual bulb. I remember when I was new to reptiles and I had a similar question. So this is just gonna be answering that question. Are they the same? Well, no, let's first off take a look at the packaging. Here we go, there we go. Got the spotlight, the 50 watt Arcadia spotlight, and the Arcadia Floodlight. The general parameter of this is the spotlight is much more of an intense single beam going down, whereas the floodlight will give a gentler basking area for the specific species that we're working on. On the front of the packaging, you can see it straight away there. You've got solar lights on that one and floodlights on that one. So you can tell them apart just by that. Down here, E27, that's the actual um, sort of, that's the fitting that, screws into the ceramic fitting. So when you've got an E27 bulb, you want an E27 ceramic holder. You can get them in bayonets, which is just like a click on that we get here in the UK. It tells you a little bit here, it aids well-being and color vision with UVA. That's ultraviolet A on the ultraviolet spectrum. It's on both bulbs. Down here, the motto that Arcadia seems to operate on is recreating the wild. So this is Wild Recreation. Wild Recreation is also a book by the head scientist at Arcadia, John Courtney Smith. If you get the chance, go and have a look at it because it is an amazing book. And down the bottom on both of them, you get the website, ArcadiaReptile.com. You can see the two different bulbs there. One's got a white filament around the outside and the other one's crystal clear. That is a coating that's on the inside of the actual lamp. If we turn them sideways just here, we've got a few different languages because Arcadia is a worldwide company. You'll see that dotted throughout the rest of the packaging. There's just various different elements that say how much of a world package it is. Here, we'll start with the floodlight. Over here, you've got includes UVA to aid well-being and colour vision, increases ambient temperatures. It's a warm colour output. So that is more of a orangey sort of colour. We'll test that out in a second on this rig just here. Uh, use it with a thermostat along with the species appropriate Arcadia Reptile UVB system. Over here, the spotlight, it includes UVA and aids well-being and colour vision, increases the ambient temperature and has a focused beam for intense basking. So what I want to test is, does the spotlight make it more hotter in a smaller area than the actual floodlight, which will be, which should be a bigger basking area. Will it be? Won't it be? Will this be more volatile than that one? We don't know. We're going to test all that out. And here, again, warm colour output on the spotlight. Let's turn on to the back of the enclosed, the back of the boxes just here. You've got loads of different graphs and charts. This is your energy rating one. This is the spectrometer um, chart that just shows you the colours and all the outcomes. Up here, you've got the two different codes. They are two totally different codes. So that just shows that they are two totally different products. Wattage, 50 watt on both. Calvin, that's the colour of the actual light that comes off. So your spotlight is a Calvin weight of 2800. Now, a good, really white basking sort of light is around about 6500. That's your sort of plant grow sort of lights, where it's really white, really blue. It just basks down really nicely. Whereas on the floodlight, it's 3200. So it should be a little bit whiter on the, um, what's that one? The floodlight. Over here, UVB, no. UVA, yes. Infrared, yes. Let's turn the packaging back over to the side again. Just similar to your front packaging, everything you need to know there. Again, there. Let's get them plugged in and tested. We always seem to be using this testing rig. It's just a little DIY bodge together, sort of throw together job. 
uh, to do the job properly. But it is very, very DIY. It was Greg from Cheshire Reptile Rescue that helped me sort of build that. He's got much more knowledge in that sort of stuff than I have. But I kind of want to give it a name. Stick a name on the side of it, something. Stick your name suggestions in the comments. Let's open these boxes and see if there is a difference in the bulbs. There we go. We're going to start with the floodlight because that's going to be going over this side of the enclosure. Whereas the spotlight is going to be going over this side of the enclosure. The floodlight, we're expecting it to have this white sort of look on the actual lamp. That's just the price that I paid for it, £3.99. We open it up, do, 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 do. it comes with that securing thing just in there, just to stop the bulb from rattling around. That fitting at the top that you can see is the E27 fitting. So that just comes off, make sure you do take that off. This is a basking bulb, leaving that on will be a fire risk. And you can see just there, we've got the E27 fitting just there. We've got the white ceramic around the actual lamp itself and underneath, directly on the bottom, you've got the name Arcadia 50 Watt Solar Flood. So this tells you that it is a floodlight. It has got the CE stamp on it. Let's get that screwed in up here and we'll put the box together uh, just like that and put it here just so that we know which bulb is where. Let's go over to the spotlight. Again, they're exactly the same price, £3.99 we paid for this one. We have brought this one and we have spent some money here, so I really appreciate it if you did hit that thumbs up button. It's just solely because that helps this video get pushed out by YouTube and we can earn a little bit more money to help cover the costs that we have done. There is the difference. We again have got the E27 fitting on the top, but you can automatically see it's a shiny surface there. It's like a chrome finish. That finish is actually put on the inside of the lamp. And I would imagine that's there to focus the light beam straight down. There's nothing really much to say about it. On the Again, on the front of it, just there, you've got the little bit of writing that says what it is. The 50 watt solar spot. Perfect. Let's get that one plugged in over here. We'll put this packaging all back together perfectly fine and stick it on the right side of this test just so that we know and we have a reference that there is a spot lamp on that side. You don't just have to get these in 50 watt, these do come in a variety of different wattages and I'll leave some links down in the description down below. And we're now about to plug it in and have an instant reaction so you can see the instant difference between the two bulbs. Over here, the white one, that's the flood. This one, the chrome one, that's the spotlight. This is the plug, which I'm actually going to put the cable up out of the way so that it doesn't interfere with anything. And three, two, one, boom. There we go. What can you notice instantly? We'll move that out of the way. They both seem to be doing about the same sort of job. You can see how that one's a lot more focused in that little area there. Whereas over here, it's a big round circle. Let's leave them to warm up for around about an hour then we're going to get the temperature cannon on it and check the temperatures. We noticed that off the wooden surface there's an awful lot of reflection. So we're going to cover the surface in white paper. That way you're just going to get that little bit of added sort of you can see it a lot better sort of thing. I'm just going to keep layering it down just like that. Move it up so you don't see no black coming through. Uh, so you can see how this one is all streaky. There's loads of little streaks going around. And then you've got a bit of a dark patch directly in the middle. So I want to check the temperature here when it's fully warmed up to see whether that dark patch is cooler than the rest of the area directly around it. It's going to be interesting to see that. We're running off 30 centimetres from the bottom of the bulb to the actual bottom of the surface here. Let's check over there. And we'll start just laying the bits of paper down. Go right up into the corners up here. Down there. So you can already see there's no little streaky lines on this one. You'll be able to see it better once I've actually got the paper laid down and we can actually see it a bit more clearer. So I'm either going to put one more just there for added effect. You can see that there, there's just a big light glow around that whole area just there. There's no sort of, it doesn't look like there's any intense spots or any dead cool spots. But again, we're going to leave it to sort of warm up and then we're going to come back to it because this area may totally change once the actual lamp itself has warmed up. The same with this one over here. It'll be interesting to see what it's like in an hour. You can see on the spotlight what I mean by all the intense lines that are around. You've got all this, like there's an intense line there, there's one going around there, there's one up here. There's loads of warming areas here, but then this area here looks a bit dead. Whereas the, the floodlight is just a big continuous ball just there. So, But if you have a look from a distance, 
you can definitely see which one looks more intense than the other. So it'll be interesting to see if that's got a better temperature than what that one has. Now I'm not expecting no massive temperatures to be shown on this actual test solely because they're only 50 watt bulbs and they are 30 centimeters away from the actual paper that you can actually see. I would be interested to see if that little spot in the middle is cooler. If it is cooler, if we move that lamp higher up, will that cooler spot get bigger? We don't know. I don't even know whether it's a cooler spot. But While it's heating up, we've got the tape measure. We wanna see how wide the beams actually go. So for this one, I'm gonna use it just on that hot area just there. And I think it goes up to about there to about there. So we've got a 10 inch beam all the way around. Is it the same that way? As near as makes no difference, 10 inch circle all the way around at 30 centimeters away from the lamp. Come over to this side and this is where it gets interesting because it starts there and oh, yeah, there and finishes there. So is it the same that way? Starts about there. Yeah, so this side has got a 15 inch radius of a lot more gentle light. You can see you can't see any massive hot spots going through and around all of that. So the floodlight has a wider range than the spotlight, which is to be fair, exactly what we expected. The interesting results for me and the things that I want to know is basically I use the spotlight in my morning geckos enclosure because it's directly on the top in the middle and I want a focused beam into one specific area that's not too big and it's not too much of a distance away from the actual basking spot itself. Whereas I use the floodlights for my bigger animals, uh, my bearded dragon and so on and so on. After one hour we come back with the temperature cannon, just says a temperature straight on the middle. We've got it in centigrade. Um, we're actually going to move it over to Fahrenheit just because it's a bit more accurate with the very slight differences in temperatures. So over here, we're going to use that as a control. That is 71.9 degrees Fahrenheit right in the middle. That's a control. That's what it is right now here in this room. We're going to start off on the outside just there. You can see where the uh, laser pointer is. So we're just there, we've got 71.5, we'll slowly move in, and just there it starts to increase. We've got 73, uh, 74, 76, 70, 80, or 81. Now we're coming on to that black spot in the middle of the actual light now. It's an 83.4, into the black spot it drops to 81. Oh no, 80, 79. 79.8 in that black spot and then straight out of the black spot on the other side back up to 80 and it just keeps increasing slowly slowly now it's starting to drop off again so yeah there is a slight slight um drop in that center piece where that lull is let's go from side to side now we'll start over there and we'll work our way in seven yes it's about right about right now cut oh there we go up to 80 into that centerpiece and it drops again it's 79.5 oh it's gone down to 78.9 so it varies around that now that may seem like oh my god it's a big deal that's in fahrenheit so if we move it over to centigrade it really isn't that good so the control is 21 on the hottest area it runs up to 27 then 25.9 so it literally is one degree centigrade drop in the middle the only issue you've got with that is when a bearded dragon senses its heat from the third eye in the middle of the top of its head so if its head is can you see where the laser pointer actually is no you can't if its head is here in the hottest part its body won't be in the in the heat that it thinks it's in so it won't be able to digest its food as good. It still will be because that is still hotter than the general control further around. But it's definitely something to worth uh, considering and keeping in mind if you do use a thermostat probe. If you've got your thermostat probe in that middle piece, it's not registering the actual heat that the majority of the area actually is. Now, luckily, you can physically see that lull. So if you can see that lull, then you just know not to put your thermostat probe actually in that area or lower your, I would imagine, lower your heat bulb down so that that vanishes. It'll get smaller the lower the bulb gets. We're actually gonna test that shortly and it gets bigger as the bulb goes further away. So just keep an eye, if you've got that dark area inside your enclosure, it's a cooler area and you might wanna do something about it. We're gonna lift this whole rig up shortly just to see if that dead area 
gets bigger. I'd love to be able to drop it down, which I might be able to drop it down by a few centimeters, but not by much. We'll do that towards the end. Let's check over the other side at the floodlight. Again, we're gonna move it over to uh, Fahrenheit, the control, 71.5. And we're gonna work our way from here, which is directly down just there, uh, and move our way in slowly. So it starts at 71, it's already increasing up. Uh, 73, 74, 75, 78. So we're around the middle of the actual lamp now, we're on 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is already a lot cooler than that side, which is exactly what we expected anyway. That side is more intense than this side. So we're gonna go back into the middle of this lamp uh, there we go, and slowly move our way. We've definitely got a much more, there we go, and it's back out to room temperature there. So we've definitely over here got much more of a stable, like instead of having that whole little spot like that, that's a good temperature, this is a lot wider, but it's a lot cooler, which is again, perfectly acceptable, exactly what I expected with these two different lamps. Can you see that little thing just there? That's a big hide, it's 15 centimeters tall. So we've actually lifted these bulbs up by 15 centimeters. They're now running at 45 centimeters above the ground. You can already see that this side, that big black hole area, that has got a lot bigger. And that just shows that if the animal's head is here in this hot spot, his body will not be getting the correct heat he needs. So these bulbs, again, this is a 50 watt bulb, so it's not designed to be that far away from the actual hotspot itself. But you can see what happens just down there. That same thing happens when you've got the wrong bulb inside the wrong ceramic dome as well. Temperature wise, again over here, it's just cooled down so much. That extra 15 centimeters away has cooled it basically down to slightly hotter than the room temperature control temperature that we actually took. So the flood is that wide and that general, that I mean, you can see how even it heats up and it lights up that whole area, but it's not heating it up that much. It's only lifting it by a degree or two, nothing special, that's Celsius. Whereas over here, we still have an increased temperature, just not massively increased. Now that's perfectly, acceptable perfectly understandable because it is so far away from the actual basking spot just there that area in the middle again is only a few degrees cooler yeah there we go further out yeah so it's only a few degrees cooler in the middle but again that's to be expected with it being so far away from the actual lamp itself but after dropping it back down to 30 centimeters above the basking spot you can see just there is the dark patch I want to know if we can get this closer, will that dark patch actually vanish? The only way we're going to do this, because this whole rig is done like this, is just basically lean it over. So we've dropped it. Let's get the tape measure and see what we're dropping it to. So it's gone from 30 centimetres from the bottom of the ball. We'll lower it back down. It already is shrinking. And you can see how much of an intense light that is. That whole dark patch is still there at 20... 20 centimeters so at 20 centimeters but you can see how small it actually is there and how much more focused that actual that beam of light is that beam of light is now only six inches wide all the way around and the same for the floodlight we'll do exactly the same again push it over you can see how much more intense it actually gets how much brighter it gets uh, but it's still really even coverage the whole way around while we've got these bulbs on and they've been turned on for well over an hour now, I want to show you something. And I just want to stress this fact. This is a really important piece of test. And it's nothing to do with the actual test that we're doing right now. This is of showing you straight up for a fact why you need to have a bulb guard if you've got an animal that can get to your bulbs. We're going to put this straight onto the actual lamp. So you can see both. That is Fahrenheit. That's why you do not want your animal to actually physically get to the lamp. Even over on the spotlight, it's gonna be exactly the same. These are only 50 watt bulbs, remember? The same distance away, press it, look at that. This is why you need a bulb, look at that. Wow, that's why you need a bulb cage. Look at that, 300. That's why you need a bulb cage if you've got an animal that can get to those, lamps.
If you want to see any more tests comparing different brands, comparing the same brands but different things, let me know in the comments down below. I love doing this sort of video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.